Mushrooms and Dragons, Season 2, Episode 4, The Ancient Gods, Emmanuel Velikovsky. Velikovsky claims Jupiter had been the prime mover in the catastrophe that saw the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. In episode 3, we gave you the first 11 names for planet Jupiter. In this episode, we will finish up with the names. Number 12 on our list, Anat. Anat was a goddess associated with welfare and hunting, best known from the Jugarit text. The pharaoh Ramses II referred to himself as the beloved of this goddess and called her his mother and referred to Anat as the goddess responsible for protecting him in battle. Anat recalls battles that she took part in. Among the list of enemies are Yam, a sea serpent, further serpentine sea monsters, and the Twisting Serpent, and the dominant one who has seven heads. The Hebrew Bible, Shamgar 3, verse 31, And after him was Shamgar, the son of Anat, who slew the Philistines, 600 men with an ox gourd, and he delivered Israel. Anat on a throne, with her spear and shield. Number 13, Baal. Baal is Hebrew, meaning Lord, in Northwest Semitic languages. Baal was particularly associated with the storm and fertility god. The Ugaric god Baal is the protagonist in the Baal cycle. Baal is known as the rider of the clouds. The spelling of the English term Baal comes from the Greek, which appears in the New Testament, the Septuagint, and the Vulgate. Baal was worshipped by the Phoenicians and the Canaanites. The worship of Baal in Canaan, where he eventually supplanted El as the leader of the gods and patron of kingship. Baal held special enmity against snakes. He fought the Tannin, the Twisted Serpent, Lotan, the Fugitive Serpent, the Mighty One with Seven Heads, and his battle with Yamu. At first, the name Baal was used by the Jews for their god without discrimination. But as the struggle between two religions developed, the name Baal was given up by the Israelites as a thing of shame. Baal, god of fertility, weather, rain, wind, lightning, seasons, and war. Symbol, bull and thunderbolt. His Greek equivalent is Zeus. Number 14, Malak. Malak is a word that appears in the Hebrew Bible, primarily in the book of Leviticus. Malak, referring to a Canaanite god. The word Malak occurs eight times in the standard Hebrew Bible. Five of these are in Leviticus, one in Kings, one in two Kings, another in the book of Jeremiah. The Septuagint is the Greek version of the Old Testament. The Septuagint uses the name Malach in Amos. Malach and the star of your God, Ramphan. Amos 526. Scholars have proposed that Malach may be the same God as Baal. Number 15 on our list. Brihaspati. Brihaspati is a Hindu god. In the Vedic scriptures of Hinduism, the word also refers to a god who counsels the gods and goddesses. The word refers to the largest planet 
of the solar system, Jupiter, Brigaspati, appears in the Rig Veda, born from the first great light, the one who drove away darkness. Brihaspati, the god of Jupiter. His day is Thursday. He rides an elephant with eight white horses. Number 16, Kang D. Kang D, the green deity, the green emperor, the great deity of the eastern peak, is the manifestation of the supreme god. The blue-green dragon, Quing Long, is the, his animal form and constellation, and his astral body is planet Jupiter. Kang Di is worshipped as the doused deity of the sacred mountain, Mount Tai. Mount Tai is the holiest of China's sacred mountains, According to mythology, it is formed from Pangu's head after his body's dissection. Kang Di, the blue green dragon, is planet Jupiter. Number 17, Ahura Mazda. Ahura Mazda, Persian, is the creator deity and the god of the sky. In the ancient Iranian religion, Zoroastrian, he is the first and most frequently invoked spirit in the Yansa, meaning of the word Ahura is Lord and Mazda is wisdom. Ahura Mazda was worshipped from the time of Darius the Great to Artaxerxes II. He was worshipped and invoked alone in all extant royal inscriptions. It was custom for every emperor to have an empty chariot drawn by white horses to invite Ahura Mazda to accompany the Persian army on battles. Plutarch, an ancient writer, wrote, Horamaz enlarged himself thrice his former size and removed himself as far distant from the sun is as the sun is from earth and he adorned the heavens with stars one star he set before all the other as a guardian and a watchman the dog star 24 other gods he created and placed in an egg but those created by Aramanius who were equal in number to the others, pierced through the egg and made their way inside. Hence, the evils are now combined with the good. But a destined time shall come when it is decreed that Aramanius, engaged in bringing on pestilence and famine, shall by these be utterly annihilated and shall disappear. And then shall the earth become a level plain and there shall one manner of life and one form of government for blessed people who shall speak one tongue. Plutarch. Number 18. Viracocha. Viracocha is the great creator deity in the Inca mythology. Viracocha was the most important deity in the Incan pantheon and seen as the creator of all things or which all things are created. Viracocha created the universe, the sun, the moon, and the stars by commanding the sun to move over the sky and civilization itself. Viracocha rose from the lake during the time of darkness to bring forth light. He made the sun, the moon, and the stars. He made mankind by breathing into stones. But his first creation were brainless giants that displeased him. 
So he destroyed them with a great flood and made human beings who were better than the giants from smaller stones. After creating them, they were scattered all over the world. Frederick Dodson, in his book, Levels of Heaven and Hell, teaches us that Vilakocha is ancient German for fiery chariots. Why does ancient German match up with Aztec and Mayan? We're going to save that for another episode. Number 19, Isis. Isis was a major goddess in ancient Egyptian religion whose worship spread throughout the Greco-Roman world. Isis restores breath and life into Osiris's body. We told you that Osiris was the planet Saturn. Then Osiris only lives in the underworld, in the furthest part of our solar system. Then Isis has a son, Horus. The 20th name on our list is Amon. Amon, or Amen. So if you are saying a prayer and ending it with Amen, you are invoking planet Jupiter. Amon was a major ancient Egyptian deity. Amon, in the old Egyptian pyramid text, meant something like the hidden one. Epithets found in the pyramid text, O oh, you the great god whose name is unknown. As Zeus, Amon, and Jupiter, Amon, he came to be identified with the Zeus in Greece and the Jupiter in Rome. The 21st name on our list for planet Jupiter is Yahweh. Yahweh was an ancient Levantine deity and the national god of the Israelite kingdoms of Israel and Judah. In the oldest biblical literature, Yahweh's attributes are typically ascribed to weather and war, leading the heavenly army against Israel's enemies. The early Israelites worshipped Yahweh alongside a variety of Canaanite gods and goddesses, including El, which is the planet Saturn. Over time, the existence of other gods was denied, and Yahweh was proclaimed the creator deity and the sole divinity to be worshipped. Speaking the name Yahweh became regarded as taboo, and the Jews began to substitute other words. The original pronunciation of the God's name was forgotten entirely. Genesis 19, 23. Yahweh reigned on Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from Yahweh out of heaven. He overthrew those cities. Then, Lot's wife from behind him looked and she became a pillar of salt. That is where salt comes from. It is transformed from biology. The 22nd and final name on our list for planet Jupiter is Jove. Jove is another name for Jupiter. Altogether, Jupiter's moons form a satellite system called the Jovian system. Some can hear the correlation between the Yah and the Yov in the Yad He Yod He Yahweh Jove. We've gone through the godly names the ancient people had for the planets, planet Jupiter, planet Saturn, and planet Mercury. In the next episode, Dragon Slayer, planet Venus, is born.